Welcome to this video looking at Year 9 Probability and it's from the White Rose Maths website and it's aimed at Key Stage 3 Maths and it's from the set to B, okay, from there. So this is aimed at Key Stage 3 Maths. Guys, so students in year 7, year 8, year 9, and even key stage 4 maths, so even year 10 and year 11, okay, GCSC, foundation and higher as well. As ever, guys, please feel free to pause the video, try and attempt all the questions first, and then press play when you're ready. Question number one. A bag contains three blue, four green, and two red marbles. A marble is selected at random. What is the probability that the marble is green? Well, I've got four green... Okay, if you look in the bag, one, two, three, four, out of one, two, three, four, five, so four out of nine, okay, so the fraction would be four ninths, guys, okay, let's just write that four again, a bit more neatly, okay, so the answer is four ninths, okay, because there are four out of a total of nine. What is the probability that the marble is not red? Well, the probability of a marble being red is 2 ninths, therefore not red will be 7 ninths. And the reason for that is because probability has to add up to equal 1. Okay, if I add together 2 sevenths, sorry, 2 ninths and 7 ninths, I get 9 ninths, which is equal to 1. Okay, so this comes from the idea that probability has to add up to equal 1 whole. Okay, which is 9 ninths, which is 1. If the probability of getting a red is 2 ninths, then not a red is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 out of 9. Question number two, guys. The probability of a spinner landing on a number less than five is equal to a half. The probability of a spinner landing on a square number is three eighths. Okay, complete the spinner. Okay, so I want a number less than five. For the minute, I've got one, two, three, four numbers that are less than five. Okay, and it says. The probability of it landing on a square number is 3 8. Now, I've only got one square number, which is 4 here. So, I can put another square number, such as 9. Okay, and I can even put 16 as well. Okay, because 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. These three numbers are square numbers. I could have, of course, have put 9 and 9. Okay, I couldn't have put a 4 because obviously half of them is less than 5. If I put an extra 4 in, then the probability of it being less than 5 becomes greater than a half. So, I couldn't have put a 4 in either one. How However, I could have put a 9 twice, okay, or a 16 twice, okay, or 16, 25, okay, or any other appropriate square number, okay, because it doesn't have a limit on what the numbers range to, okay, so there are infinitely many answers for this, okay, other than 16 and 9. Okay, question number three, Alex records how many times a biased coin lands on heads after a different number of flips, so relative frequency, so 7 divided by 10 equals 0 0.7, 13 divided by 20, well that's going to give me 0 0.65, okay, Next one, 32 fiftieths, okay, so to work out the relative frequency, it's a number of heads divided by the number of flips, okay, 32 divided by 50 is 0 0.64. Okay, because if you think about putting these fractions out of a hundred, then it will make it a bit more easier. Sixty-eight divided by a hundred is zero point six eight. Okay, so this is where I got the decimals from, guys. So to work out the relative frequency, I did the number of heads divided by the number of flips, and I got my decimal answer. 
Okay, so that's the first part done. Which relative frequency gives the best estimate of the probability of the coin landing on heads? Well, in general, the probability of getting the heads, guys, is a half or 0 0.5. So we want the decimal that is closest okay to 0 0.5 actually however okay another factor will be the number of flips okay so i am gonna say okay that 0 0.68 will give like a bet best estimate because it depends on the more number of times i throw it the closer and closer i will get okay so the more number of flips i have the closer and closer i'll get okay in general okay this is tending towards like 0.7 okay it is around that area okay so the more i throw it like the higher chance of it landing on heads as opposed to tails because it's what i call a biased coin a biased coin means it's not fair okay but in general the probability of getting a heads on a non-biased coin is 0 0.5 okay the probability of getting the tails on a non-biased coin is 0 0.5 okay but this is saying which gives the best estimate so this straight away needs to be the one that has the most number of trials so that's why i've gone for that answer okay because it's got the most number of attempts okay the more flips that i have the closer and closer it will be to that true value okay which in this case is around 0.7 Question number four, the table shows the probabilities of a biased spinner landing on each outcome. Okay, the spinner is spun 250 times. Estimate how many times it will land on purple. Well, probability has to add up to equal one. So 0 0.35 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1 plus the probability of purple has to equal one. So 0 0.35 plus 0.25 is 0.6 plus 0.1 is 0.6. 0.7 therefore the probability of purple is 0.3 okay and you can of course check it by adding the decimals together it does give you an answer of one i'm now going to work out estimate number of times i'm going to do 250 times the probability of it being purple which is 0 0.3 okay now this one's slightly easier because if you imagine 0 0.3 is 3 tenths so i'm dividing by 10 and then times it by 3 so it becomes 25 times it by 3 is 75 okay because i imagine 0 0.3 as 3 tenths so i did 3 tenths multiplied by 250 okay so i changed it into like a fraction of an amount okay i did 250 divided by 10 and then times by 3 okay that's the same as multiplied by 0 0.3 Question number five, guys. The two-way table shows information about people at a food festival. Okay, complete the two-way table. Well, to work out the total of males, I'm going to add them together. So that's going to be 260. Okay, I do appreciate that I'm doing this in my head, guys, but please do feel free to use your column addition to work it out, okay, and check my answers, okay, along with that. Adding these together, I get 245, okay, to work out this amount, I'm going to add these two numbers, so if I just do 45, add 88, and then I'm going to add that to... 400 to make it a bit easier for me so 5 plus 8 is 13 carry that extra one i'll put it on top 4 plus 8 is 12 plus the 1 is equal to 13 okay so that's 133 plus 400 is going to be 533 okay 533 okay take away 260 okay so doing this in my head guys 500 take away 200 is 300 okay 
And then 33 take away 60 is minus 27. Okay, you... Which is equal to 273, okay, for that one there. Okay, 273 take away 110. Well, take away 100 is going to be 173. Take away 10 again becomes 163. Okay, and we can check our answers by working this out. Okay, next part. One person is selected at random. What is the probability that they are 50 or over? Okay, so it is going to be out of a total, okay, of 533, three, because it's looking at the total number of people, okay. The number of people that are 50 or over, male and female, is 288. So the answer is 288 over 533, guys. Okay. Next question, a person aged under 50 is selected at random, so a person aged under 50, okay, what is the probability that they're female, well it's going to be out of, okay, under 50, so it's, it's going to be out of 245, okay, because it says a person aged under 50 is selected at random, so it's, it's going to be out of this. What's the probability that they're female? Well, it's 110. 110 over 245, and I can simplify this fraction, but I'll leave it as that, okay? But you are welcome to obviously simplify that fraction, okay? Question number six, guys. C and D are independent events. Probability of C is 0.25, probability of D is a is one fifth. Find the property of C and D. So the word and means I multiply. So I'm going to do 0 0.25 times one fifth. Well, 0 0.25 as a fraction is one quarter. So I'm doing one quarter multiplied by one fifth. It's multiplying fractions. So I times the numerator together and the denominator together. So one times one is one. And 4 times 5 is 20. So the answer is just 1 20th. Or 1 20th. Okay. Question number 7, guys. Aisha gets the bus to school every Monday and Thursday. If she catches the bus, the probability that she is late to school is 0 0.35. Okay. Complete the probability tree diagram so that has to add up to equal one so that has to be 0 0.65 okay and again it's going to be the same outcome for thursday because thursday doesn't depend on monday so 0 0.35 0 0.35 for that 0 0.65 for on time Okay, and then 0 0.65 for on time again. Okay, find the probability that Aisha is late for school on exactly one of the two days. That means on time on Monday, late on Thursday, okay, and late on Monday and on time on Thursday. Okay, this is exactly one. So it's this tree times this tree plus this tree times this tree. So it's this number times this number plus this number times this number. Now it's the same sum here. So I'm doing 0 0.65 times 0 0.35. That gives me 0 0.2275. Okay, and again, for the next outcome, it's also going to be 0 0.2275. Okay, adding those together, I get 0 0.455. So the final answer, guys, is 0 0.455. Okay, 
That's for her to be late on exactly one of those dates. Now, if it said at least, then I would include this third outcome, okay? But because it said exactly one day, then that's only two possible outcomes. They are that she is on time on Monday and late on Thursday, okay? Or late on Monday and on time on Thursday. So it's one of these two outcomes. It's this tree this part of the tree times this part of the tree plus this part of the tree times this part of the tree okay 0 0.65 times 0 0.35 gave me this answer and 0 0.35 times 0 0.65 also gave me the same answer because multiplication is commutative Okay, so be very careful guys, if it says at least, then I would include the last outcome, okay, but because it says exactly one, then it means I've got to be late on one day on time for the other, and vice versa, um, on time for the first day, and late for the second or the corresponding day. Okay, right guys, that's the end of today's video on probability, so I sincerely hope you found it useful, I hope you found it informative, if you did, please press like, please press that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, okay, and let's hit 2k subscribers, okay, by the end of this month, okay, and lastly, please turn on post notification by clicking that bell icon so you don't miss out on further and future videos on this channel, okay, but that's it from me today, guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon, okay, bye for now.